Hey everybody, this week's video is an oldie but goodie submitted to Ask Pete and we read it for you. It says, if we take away the idea of having an actual historical atom and an actual fall, hence taking away the idea of original sin, then what is the purpose of Jesus coming and dying on the cross? And again, as I said, this is an oldie but goodie. Uh, you know, I get asked to speak in places now and then, and a very popular topic is, can we just talk about evolution and Adam as the first man, how all this stuff fits together? So it's a perennial issue. Um, I have here, some of you probably recognize this, I wrote this book, what's the name of it? The Evolution of Adam. 2012 this book came out, which is hard to believe. That's, according to my math, eight years ago. Just a kid then, anyway. But in that book, I do address this in some detail and at fairly great length, and I hope that's helpful. But just maybe to sum up a couple of things that uh, this question, I think, is after. And as I said, it's, it's a common one, which means it's a good one. It's People want to talk about this. But the first thing I want to say, and I'm not, a, I'm not saying the questioner is at, in this place, but... You know, I hear a lot of arguments that start off sort of like, well, if this theological thing that I think is important isn't true, then everything else falls apart. It's sort of an if-then argument. And, you know, if there is no Adam, then we are in trouble, actually. You know, that's, that's sort of how this goes. We have to have an Adam, because without Adam, we don't have Jesus doing the whole dying for our sins thing. And I just want to point out that that's not an argument, because... If that's the argument you're going to make, something isn't true just because you really want it to be true. In other words, I think you have to face squarely, if you want to seek truth, in my opinion, I think you have to face squarely the possibility that Christianity is wrong, and there is no original sin, and there's no sin at all, and Jesus came for nothing. In fact, Jesus never came. In other words, you have to leave open the possibility that Christianity is not true, even if you don't want to. Now, I don't think that's a logical step at all with respect to Adam, but it's better than saying, well, Christianity has to be true, and I need an Adam for Christianity to be true, therefore there has to be an Adam, and you create a lot of cognitive dissonance with scientific data, for example. Okay, so that's that. Um, second, and I think this is probably the, the heart of the question, what I see as the problem that is created by the question, and that is aligning a historical Adam with original sin and the fall. Specifically, original sin is tied to Adam quite directly here in this question, which means, you know, what does original sin mean? Typically, the way Christians think of it, especially Protestant Christians, not exclusively, but especially, is that Adam sinned, and by sinning, he therefore made all humanity that came after him uh, to be born in a state of sin. That's pretty much what original sin means. Adam's sin is the original sin, but that sin is passed down. And in fact, in many Christian, especially Protestant ways of thinking, um, it's not just the original sin that's handed down. You're not just born with sin, but you're also born with guilt towards God, so you have an inherited guilt. That's really the issue that's involved, I think. And if you don't have an Adam doing something, then you don't have any of that stuff, so why did Jesus come, right? That's the point. Um, Augustine, famously, uh, he's the one who seems to have tied this to procreation. In other words, it's by, very, by virtue of the fact that you have children that they're born in sin. So it's, it's just the act of sex passes something on I don't know, we might say genetically or something, but it passes on this inherited guilt and this inherited sin. And here's the problem with that way of thinking, though. First of all, it's not in the Garden of Eden story at all. There is no indication, none, zero, that the trespass or the sin of Adam is what is downloaded onto other people that come after him. There are two things that Adam is uh, punished for, and the first is, you know, it's going to be hard for you to work the land, which seems like an odd thing until you remember that Adam, which means also human or man, and Adama, which means ground, those words are connected and related. Adam is taken from Adama. 
And by saying you're going to have difficulty working the land and the ground and the ground's cursed, there is an alienation dimension there between the human and what the human is taken from. So that's sort of a big deal. But the other thing that is promised to uh, Adam because of this trespass, because of the sin, is death. But there's no indication whatsoever in Genesis that, oh yeah, and by the way, everyone who's born after you is going to be born in a state of sinfulness. Because if you need to be born in a state of sinfulness inherited from Adam, how is it that Adam even sinned at all in the first place? You see, it, it's sort of, you always come back to that, like, why did Adam and Eve disobey and sin when they weren't born in sin, their children were? I think that's a problem. Uh, another point is that this idea of original sin is found nowhere, absolutely nowhere in the Old Testament. There's one point in Psalm 51, you know, um, f basically he's been, David's been sinful since his womb. That's hyperbolic language, and that's the only place you'll find that. You can't pin an entire Christian doctrine on one verse in a psalm that uses rhetorical flourish. Right? It's like, I'm as bad as I could ever be. I'm the worst person who ever lived. That's not literally true. That's hyperbolic. That's embellishment. But nowhere in the Old Testament do we see anywhere the notion that God's wrath is directed towards you because you're born in sin. And the reason why the Israelites keep screwing up is because they're hopelessly bound to sin and God's wrath. In fact, the opposite assumption is made throughout the Old Testament. Listen, here's the law. You can keep it. You can do this. It's not too hard. Deuteronomy 30. It's not too hard. It's right in front of you. Right? So the Old Testament, this is a completely foreign notion. Not even is this found, in my opinion, and I'm not alone in this, folks, by the way, but I don't think this notion of original sin, something inherited from Adam, is even in the New Testament. The closest you might come, as I see it, is Romans 5.12, where Paul mentions Adam. <clears throat> and I just want to read that to you. Uh, Paul says there that death came through sin. He's talking about Adam. Death came through sin, which is true. Adam sinned, and as a result, people uh, death came into the world. And so death spread because all have sinned. See, that's what Paul says in Romans 5.12. Well, he doesn't say, and so death spread because Adam sinned. He puts the responsibility squarely on each one of us. Now, here's the curious thing. In Augustine's day, around 400, he was reading Latin, and his Latin translation of Romans 5.12 was incorrect. It was absolutely wrong. Everyone knows this. His translation says, rather, instead of, and so death spread because all have sinned, it says death spread in whom all sinned. And who's the whom? What's well, Adam? You see, that's the problem. I don't blame Augustine sort of for coming up with what he did with this idea of original sin and through procreation, but that's not what Romans 5.12 says. And so Jesus... So here's my point. Jesus atoning, his atoning death, is not dependent on Adam having handed down sinfulness to us. And I, I get into that a lot more in, in uh, the evolution of Adam, but, you know, that's, that's the gist of it. Our, our state of sinfulness, you know, you just have to sort of sit alone with your thoughts for a half a second in the quiet of the evening, and you know that, you know, we're deeply dysfunctional human beings. I am. You know, we have problems. We create problems. We're not at peace with others. We're not at peace with ourselves. There's something that is not whole or healed in us. And that reality doesn't depend on whether or not Adam was a real person. And the need to atone does not depend on whether Adam was a real person. It is sort of a state of sin. Which brings me to my next point, and that's a Jewish way of thinking about this notion of original sin. Um, how Christians think about this, the Adam story, is really a Christian thing, and Jews don't do this. They call it rather not an original sin, but there's an evil inclination that has beset humanity from the beginning. And they get that idea of an evil inclination from the flood story, Genesis 6, which is the first place that sinfulness is really addressed outside of the Adam story. And it sort of seems to give an explanation for why people are sinful. Genesis 6, 5 goes like this. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every 
inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil all the time. That's all it says. There's no cause attributed. There's nothing there that says, oh, and by the way, because Adam sinned that we became sinful because of him. We didn't become sinful because of Adam. We die because of Adam. Our sin is our own. The Cain and Abel story, same thing. Cain and Abel, Cain kills Abel, not because he was born in a hopeless state of sin, but because he chose to follow in his father's footsteps. That's how Genesis 4 goes. And in the flood story, what's the cause of God saying the inclination of the hearts is only evil all the time? Well, it's not explicitly stated. It just seems to be a thing. This is what humanity is. And perhaps the cause of this is in the preceding verses, perhaps. I, I'm not 100% convinced of this, but it's worth mentioning. The cohabitation of the sons of God and the daughters of man, the divine beings and the human women, Whoever the divine beings were, that's a whole other video. Don't worry about that here. Read a commentary. But there, that union that may have produced giants, depending on how you read this story, but they may have been what has really just so uh, uh, driven humanity to a state of sinfulness that God says, I've got to kill everybody. Again, and that, too, is another video of the flood story. Anyway, but the point is that... Um, I like the Jewish explanation better because it simply acknowledges the evil inclination of humanity, but it doesn't attribute a cause to it. Because Genesis 2 and 3, the Adam and Eve story, doesn't attribute a cause to it. And I think that's wise, right? So, see, sin is a given. That's really my point in terms of answering this question. Sin's a given. It's still real. It still needs to be remedied. It still needs to be atoned for. We can use a lot of the New Testament language there. It's still real. But to hang that need for Jesus on a historical Adam is, I think, a bad idea. I think it's a really fundamental misreading of the biblical texts themselves, more than just one, Genesis and a few other places. Like I mentioned, Psalm 51 or um, Romans 5, maybe 1 Corinthians 15, if you, uh, may, maybe one or two other places. But it's a misreading of the biblical narrative, not just verses, but the story as a whole. And it's also, you know, to insist on this fusion between Adam being real and Jesus' atonement being real, I think that paints us into a very tough corner because scientifically there is no first human. And that's, you know, genetics, and I talk about that again a little bit in the evolution of Adam, but um, go visit the biologos.org website and read some of their stuff there about genetics. It's, you, scientifically, you can't get there. So what do you do then? Do you still have to have an Adam for Christianity to be true? Man, I hope not. See, even Adam, though, doesn't seem to be the first person. See, that's the last thing I want to point out here. Even in the story, in the logic of Genesis 1, 2, and 3, Adam doesn't seem to be the first person. I see a mass of humans created, just like a mass of all living creatures are created in Genesis chapter 1. Created them male and female, be fruitful, multiply, blah, blah, blah. Genesis 2, you have Adam, and you seem to have a different character altogether. He's not the first human, but he's the man. He's Adam. There's something about him. And just to point out what every Sunday school kid will point out. The fact is that Adam, um, you know, he's really just doesn't do a good thing, right? And then Adam, of course, they have Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel, and what does Cain do? Well, Cain is, first of all, concerned that people who are going to find him are going to kill him. He's afraid of a posse coming after him. Where do these people come from, right? And then he goes down to the land of Nod, which means wandering in Hebrew. It's very metaphorical. But there he finds a wife and has a family and builds a city. It seems like there are a lot of other people out there. I think those people out there are Genesis chapter 1. That's, they're described there. Adam, in the logic of this story, is not the, is not the first human being, but a particular kind of human, which I argue in the evolution of Adam, as others do too, that this Adam is actually a foreshadowing, a prototype of Israel as a nation. So we're seeing this story of Adam as a story of Israel being driven out of the garden like Israel is driven out of the land later on. Okay, if I get into all that, we'll be here for another 20 minutes. I'm not going to do that. So just if you're interested, the evolution of Adam, 
that's my way of putting it. There are other books out there too that talk about similar things. And that may be something you enjoy reading, um, at least give you food for thought. All right, folks, thanks again for watching and for downloading, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for supporting us so much. Returning in a new year has just come upon us, 2020. We hope it's a great one. We've got a lot of things in store, a lot of things we're planning uh, that are brand new things for us at the Bible for Normal People. Thanks for your support. See ya.